As you know, Kerry Okinago, who is a very uh, hardworking member of the Heart Board, is going to be leaving shortly to join the University of Hawaii system as their chief legal counsel. Um, and so we need to find a replacement for Kerry Okinaga, whose last meeting is going to be June 25th, the Heart Board meeting on June 25th. I've been working very hard to find someone who could replace her, someone who's very strong, who is really independent, who is not going to be afraid to ask the hard questions, even though you may be concerned with the answers you get, because the public who are supporting this project, the folks of, of the island of Oahu, want to make sure that every tax dollar they give towards this project is put to good use and is spent efficiently and effectively and that problems are addressed and brought forward for everyone to listen to and vet and get answers for. And it's hard to find such a person. And we looked quite a long time since Carrie said she was leaving. But we have the announcement this afternoon. The good news is one, it's a woman. And as you know, the heart board is full of a lot of men. With Carrie leaving, there would be no men, so it's a woman. But it's a woman with a proven track record that all of you know, who has demonstrated through her service to the public that she's someone not afraid to take on controversy, someone who's not afraid to do the homework, to turn over every stone to find the answers. And that person is Colleen Hanabusa, and I'd like to ask her to come out and meet all of you. Well, they even have a stool for me. <laughs> a member of the Heart Board. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to begin by saying that when Mayor Caldwell asked me about this, I, I asked him if he was crazy, simply because I do not have the reputation of doing anything that anybody necessarily wants me to do, but I will do what I think is right. And sometimes it's been, uh, some people feel out of fault. But having said that, when the mayor kept asking me about it, I realized how serious he was and how important Hart was and the success of the system was to him. And I decided that instead of being on the sidelines and being critical, that I now had an opportunity to make a difference thanks to the faith and confidence of the mayor. So I really do look forward for the opportunity of literally rolling up my sleeves and delving into everything and hopefully having answers for all of you when you raise questions as well. And it's going to be a challenge, but one that I really welcome and thank the mayor for the opportunity to serve the people of the city and county of Honolulu. Thank you very much. Thanks, Colleen. You know, I do want to thank you for agreeing to do this. As you said, it is a lot of work. Mike Formby knows that. And we know you're someone who, if you commit to something, you go 100% always. Yeah, and my husband doesn't think it's very smart <laughs> because of that. <laughs> no, we really appreciate it. And you know, for the largest construction project in the history of this place, we need someone like you to give 100% and thank to not hold back. So thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks. I mean, Colleen and I have known each other since I served in the House, and we've stayed in touch on, on various issues. And of course, when she was in Congress, she was instrumental in making sure that we got the money for rail, the $250 million tranches that we've been talking about. She is very effective there. And when she came home, we continued to stay in touch. And I thought, this is someone who could help our administration in some way. And so when that opportunity arose where we could appoint someone to the heart board of the caliber of Colleen, uh, we started talking. And as she said, you know, she didn't jump at it right away, as any smart person. Uh, would do. She said, let me think about it. I want to think, do I have the, the time, the commitment, the interest, and all of that. And I always had my fingers crossed hoping that she'd say yes. And when she did, um, in the past couple weeks, she finally committed um, earlier this week, or last week, we came forward and made the announcement. And Mary, this is your appointment uh, specific to the board? Yes, it is. As you know, um, I get to appoint folks, and so does the city council, and then the two of them choose a 10th member, which, which is uh, former President Bunda, who has stepped down and there will be an opening there. And of course, the new board will be picking that person. Representative, maybe if, if you can, uh, I'd be interested to know your thoughts. I know it's a long story, it's a long process, but if you can kind of summarize your thoughts on the rail project to this point, and maybe, well, maybe we'll just keep it at that. Well, as you know, I was in the legislature when we enacted the first, quote, GET, get the 
gave it to the home rule situation where the, the city and counties and the counties could all implement. So I was there when I saw that pass. And I will be uh, completely frank with you. I think I was a with reservation vote because it was really up to the city as to how it would do that. So I have watched this over the period of time because one, it is the largest CIP project in the history of the state. And for those who may know this about me, when I started the practice of law, I was a construction litigation attorney. So construction projects do interest me, and I know a little bit about plans and things like that and how we move forward. But it also meant, it also meant a game changer in how people think about transportation and how people think about moving from one place to the other. And remember, I am a product of the Leeward Coast. I am a fourth generation from YNI. So anybody wants to talk to me about the worst traffic, I'm somebody who did it from eighth grade every day to Honolulu to, to go to school. So these are things that are dear to me. And I guess at the point where we're at now, where there's so much distrust, so much questions about what Hart's doing, what Hart isn't doing, when the mayor asked me, the thing that kept gnawing at me was, do I have the appropriate skill sets to come forward and to actually make a difference and to help? And the mayor felt I did. And I thought about it, I said, well, I do have some skill sets that could contribute to this. I understand the legislative process as well as anyone else. And I also understand construction. I understand bonding. I understand all these different things. So I thought about it and said, this is a way that I can make a difference. And some people may think, well, in the middle of all of this, you're going to try to do something about it. You know, you got to start somewhere. And I'd like to think that I can make that difference in making everyone understand the significance, importance of this project, but in addition to that, how to make it better so everyone can buy it. Do you think the fact that Steel on Steel was, was not your first choice for this kind of a project that will help you bring a, a more critical view to no, this project? No, because that's not an issue anymore. It's not an issue. People have voted. So I think that's the other problem. We have got to realize that irrespective of how we may personally view something, you know, that's why we're a democracy. We may not like it. We may not agree. But, but believe me, that's why we vote. And that's the vote. So that's not an issue. We move on. We make the best of what we have. Okay. Thanks a lot. Appreciate your coming. On short notice, again, really appreciate it. Thank you.